relevance of traditional knowledge, why it is important, and what are the practices, and why as Indians we need to be proud of our own traditional knowledge. The kind of buzzwords that I keep hearing is Paramparik Gyan, Paramparik Vidya, and uh, um, uh, Amrit Kal, 2047, and of course the Sustainable Development Goals. So when we are talking of the Sustainable Development Goals, so the Sustainable Development Goals, I think all of you know, there, there are 17 of them. And uh, it's not just India who, who believes that, you know, traditional knowledge plays an important role in achieving the objectives of the Sustainable Development Goals. So even in the UN, they have been discussing a lot and they realize, you know, countries with rich history, India is one of them, of course, but countries with rich history, for them, the traditions and culture do play a very important role. And uh, in this context, they have I highlighted how culture can play a very important role in achieving each of the 17 objectives. Say, for example, if I have to talk the very first one, which is eradicating poverty. You know, traditional knowledge systems, especially through agriculture, where most of the nations depend on agriculture for our everyday livelihood, okay, the biodiversity plays an important role. So when you're talking of biological diversity, genetic resources, it goes hand in hand with traditions and culture. So that is how it makes a very important mark on uh, to achieve how uh, our development goes. Similarly, you take uh, the health, all of you do appreciate that our eye systems of medicine do play an important role. While we talk of the eye systems of medicine, there are so many local health traditions, district to district, village to village. I think we need to appreciate that also. They will help us achieving not just health, health but also wellness. When we are talking of education, this is where I think I would like Professor Murthy to you know, take cognizance of it. They say the diversity is important. When we are talking about diversity, say even this platform, I think India today is so well developed that the same information that I'm talking to you in English can be transmitted in our various Indian languages at the same time. And that is the need of the arm because the local population need to be inculcated with knowledge that is happening across in their own mother tongues or in their own languages. Not only that, when we are talking of skills, each of our villages you know, have immense potential and techniques that others can learn from. So when we are talking of the sustainable development goals, our traditions and culture is important. It's not just the UN, even the Food and the Agricultural Organization also recognizes that our traditions play a very important role. And here for this August gathering, which is focused only on agriculture, you would well appreciate the role of the FAO in achieving the sustainable development goals and alongside the biological diversity, the genetic resources and the associated knowledge, our traditional knowledge play an important role. As scientists who have gathered here today, all of us recognize that we feel very proud to be credited with whatever inventions we make. We would like to take a patent or any IPR tool, a geographical indication or a trademark, whatever be it, for the work that we do. Similar was the case uh, way back in the mid-90s when India observed that Haldi for wound healing was patented, Basmati rice was patented, Neem was patented. These are all our biological resources and the use, you know, turmeric for wound healing, Basmati rice, Neem for its fungicidal activity. They were all, you know, particular knowledge that we have been believing it is our tradition, you know. We are often, you know, uh, laid back in the sense that we take things for granted, you know, that our traditional knowledge is just ours. It's part of our everyday life. We take cognizance and give it enough importance only when somebody takes it away from us. This is the case what happened to our traditional knowledge in mid-90s when these were all patented. As a patent, it is a legal problem which gives the inventor or the assignee complete legal rights to play monopoly to the extent what they want, you know. So by this, what I mean is that, say in case I own the patent for turmeric on wound healing, I can stop each of you from using turmeric for wound healing. And I can also demand, you know, maybe crores of rupees to say, if you give me that kind of money, I will allow you to use. So that's the kind of, you know, role that IPR plays, you know. And we can take it for good because when we are doing science and technology and we are making new inventions, we would like to be credited with that kind of a recognition. But what happens when this paramparic gyan belongs to one and all? We have lost our 
rights. And that is where India took a strong cognizance to say, let us see what is it that needs to be done from patents from being granted on what is our paramparic gyan. So the uh, Patents Act was amended. Section 3P was introduced to say, no traditional knowledge can be patented by anybody. So it can be either as a single entity or components of it, but nothing can be patented which belongs to our traditional knowledge. While I say that, I also need to clarify, if you work beyond traditional knowledge, okay, you can get a patent. Say, I'll just give you one example. If I talk of ginger and uh, amla, both are known as anti-emetic, okay? When I individually they are known to have that property, when I mix it and I make a new formulation and I go to the patent office seeking a patent, I will not be granted a patent because it is obvious to a person skilled in the art, it is known as part of a traditional knowledge. But then as a researcher, I'm so keen and I'm so passionate about the research that I do, I work with different combinations and I find that at one particular proportion of this ginger and amla, I get about say 20 or 25 times increase in efficacy and reduction in toxicity. That is not something that is obvious to a person skilled in the art as defined by the patent act for inventorship. I can go and tell the patent office, this comes from you know immense research that I have done and I deserve a patent. So the patent office needs to take cognizance of it. So, it, you know, when I talk about the patents not being granted on traditional knowledge, how do even patent offices know that there is something called traditional knowledge? Because our knowledge is largely in even books in our own different languages, be it Sanskrit, Hindi, Tamil, Malayalam and whatever. Okay, they don't know, the patent offices do not know. Even if I give a book of say Charak Samhita in uh, Hindi, would they be able to understand when it comes to a patent application? No. So the government of India took cognizance and thus the TKDL, the Traditional Knowledge Digital Library took its birth. It is a collective effort of the country all over because when I talked about the patents being granted on Terminate, Basmati, etc. Only patent litigation helped the process of revoking or amending those patents. And when you go in for a litigation, it costs time, money and efforts. So in this case, to prevent patents from being granted on traditional knowledge, India took an effort to make sure that the world over recognizes our uh, traditional knowledge as prior art and patents are not granted. So this is the first of its kind. I'm very proud to say this effort from the government of India has gained immense respect world over. The World Intellectual Property Organization promotes this as an exemplary case for all other countries to follow. So what is required was that we needed to link traditional knowledge terminologies to modern terminologies. We also had to bring in a cross correlation between the various systems of medicine because we focused on the eye systems because of their commercial interest. So we cover Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, Sova, Rikpa and also yoga practices in the TKDL. We make it available in English and other languages that I have mentioned. So far, we have given access of the pay in this ticket deal only to patent offices to see the prior art information of our traditional knowledge and not go for a grant process whenever a patent application has any element of traditional knowledge in it. We also find third party observations in pre grant oppositions. So what does it mean? So this information, we have a huge repository. I just uh, gather from, you know, the speaker before me, he said we are, you know, having immense knowledge of I know our traditional medicines. So far, we have 4.5 lakh formulations from the Indian systems of medicine. These are all unique within the streams. Any additional information is as part of the bibliography and we are still counting. So that is the vastness of our traditional knowledge. Again, limiting to only the medicine stream, you know, and if you now include agriculture and other things, it will be much more. So when we find third party observations in terms of giving uh, TKDL evidences, the patents are not granted. So either the patents are rejected, applications are rejected or they get amended to make sure that the traditional knowledge part is out of the patent claims. And otherwise the applicant abandons or withdraws the patent application. So far we have 323 outcomes. In monetary terms, we would have saved the country almost 250 to 2,500 crores of rupees in terms of patent litigation should we have had these patents granted. 
to just give you another example from the field of agriculture kilta i guess all of you know you know the tea garden workers have that uh, bamboo basket on their banks to collect the uh, agri produce so a company in uh, himachal made a polymeric material and made a kilta out of this polymeric material the patent was granted because they said okay ergonomically it, you know and it enhances the lifestyle and you know there is lot of quality of life uh, improvements the there was a pil filed against this particular opposition filed against this uh, particular patent it took almost i think 13 years for this uh, for litigation to go on and finally the court took a call saying that this is known there is no inventor step associated with this particular uh, invention so the patent was revoked so that is how our patent system helps in protecting the uh, traditional knowledge so far whatever i had talked to you is all about defensive protections that is we are not allowing somebody else to take uh, patent rights or uh, uh, any other rights associated with our traditional knowledge but when it comes to people's knowledge that is you know when we are talking of agriculture when we are talking of meeting the tribal people and understanding their practices and all that this largely part, it becomes a part of the oral traditional knowledge that has been you know passing on from generations to generations you need to be mindful that this knowledge is the rights the custodians are the people they have rights not only over the knowledge but over the livelihoods as well so when we are talking about traditional knowledge of this kind we need to think of positive protection so far in the country we do not have any sewage in there is legal systems to protect that traditional knowledge okay we have only the defenses systems but then there are some indirect uh, frameworks from the government of india that protects the rights of the people to some extent where their traditional knowledge is concerned uh, one is the geographical indications i have given you enough examples on this particular screen because uh, any particular product or goods or even plant from that particular region can be protected it is a positive protection because it gives a brand value and a premium to the farmers especially in agriculture here the academic organizations who are gathered here may not be able to file a geographical indication because it is generally the producers or associations who need to file but we can play a facilitative role the second example is of the plant protection of plant varieties can be protected so in this case there are two varieties one the farmers varieties which are traditionally cultivated and those varieties which have been selected based on common knowledge so the, this again the kv case come in play okay so you can connect the university can connect with the kv case to ensure that the farmers varieties are protected because this is again a legal tool it gives a protection by any way between 15 to 18 years and i think the farmers do reserve uh, deserve this kind of protection for their varieties it gives a premium so yet again you know this ppvfra recognizes these kind of uh, initiatives they call the genome saviors okay one is an example of the ms swaminathan research foundation where they have the rice seed village program they have been able to cultivate uh, the lost varieties traditional varieties and they have been given this uh, genome savior award and not only that this uh, multiplied also from starting with one in wayanad district by 2015 they were almost like 30 seed villages so i think this is something that the northeast can also take up and today the mantri ji also mentioned today about the maize varieties so i just wanted to tell you out of almost 15000 varieties that have been registered under the plans close to 6.6% are the maize varieties and out of that almost close to about 30 35% are the farmers varieties so please take cognizance of it you can help your farmers and other you know uh, even products are made out of all these biodiversity to take this kind of positive uh, protection it is just to say when we are talking of documentation again taking lead from what you mentioned we at tkdl do the documentation of all the classical text so far but uh, there is a very important initiative from the government of india under the national biodiversity authority it's called the people's biodiversity register the biodiversity management committees that work at the village or panchayat level with prior informed consent of the knowledge holders document this so you can also connect with your dmcs at the local level so that these people's knowledges are all collected properly and legally 
So this is, you know, to give more information on agriculture and its relevance, I'd like to highlight this Professor Murthy has also mentioned. The ICAR has brought out uh, five volumes uh, uh, of uh, traditional agriculture with about seven documents, in fact. And three of them are dedicated to validated, scientifically validated traditional agricultural practices, the latest being from 2020. And in this uh, particular document, they mentioned about 38 validated TKs. And out of that, 23 are multi-center trials. So it kind of gives you a confidence that our traditional practices are still relevant. And also they have brought out the geographical indications. Please have a look at it. Again, because of paucity of time, I'll not go into the details, but I think the universities in the North, Northeast also can help the process. We in TKDL have now, you know, with the experience that we have in uh, Indian systems of medicine, have, you know, taken with the help of the Asian Agri History Foundation, of course, Dr. Sunita Pandey is here. We have gathered information of all the classical texts. It took almost two years to decide about the framework. That's the vastness of our traditional knowledge. It's not so easy. Talk it mantras or talk it, you know, astrological predictions or astronomical predictions or even proper harvesting. There's so much information. It took two years for us to come up with this framework. And the documentation process will now be important because for innovation, our traditional knowledge is important, and uh, we rely on the pillar of the national IPR policy towards driving innovation. Education, traditional knowledge is taking an important role in the NEP 2020, where even students are, are you know, asked to go and learn from the local people, the knowledge holders and the communities, and in turn also teach. I think this is going to be a win-win situation for India, because without traditional knowledge, I think we should not lose out on the value of our own heritage. The, I'm very happy to say that the government taking cognizance of the TKDL's efficiency so far has very recently announced its approval to widen access of the TKDL database to researchers to promote R&D innovation and trade. And also, we, as I mentioned, we are exploring expansion into other areas as well as oral traditional knowledge. I would request all of you to please contribute to the TKDL. Thank you so much.